How does a game go from winning fighting game of the year in 2022 to the servers being offline in 2023? This is the story of the platform fighting game Multiverses. Multiverses was officially announced in November 2021. The game would be a Super Smash Bros. style platform fighter, but rather than featuring Nintendo characters, this game would feature characters owned by Warner Brothers. And similar to Disney, the list of franchises owned by Warner Brothers is a lot larger than you might expect. So this makes them a perfect company for a game in this style. And it was clear from the initial reveal that the characters would have a great variety. The game was going to be developed by Player First Games, a completely unknown development team. And they were unknown for a reason, because the studio was brand new. Player First Games had been formed in 2019 and Multiverses was going to be their first game. This was slightly concerning to me, but the game looked great. And knowing Warner Brothers had basically unlimited money to fund it, did give me hope. Also, the team was great at communication with CEO Tony being at the forefront of it all. Communication is key for live service games, especially a fighting game where character balance can really make or break everything. And it was clear the team was extremely passionate and wanted to make the best game that they could. After several months of hype, the game was released as a free to play game in July 2022. The game was not officially out, it was in an open beta state, and there's nothing wrong with this. It's pretty common nowadays to release games with an early access style, but that open beta status, that's going to become important later. Despite being an open beta, the game felt great and was an immediate success. Multiverses broke records, becoming the biggest fighting game launch in Steam's history, and it was also the most successful launch for WB Games on the platform. In September, just two months after launch, the game had reached 20 million players across all platforms. They had actually done it. With just one game under their belt, Player First Games had created a hit, and they weren't slowing down anytime soon. Right around the same time the game launched, they immediately announced three new characters who would be coming soon. These characters were Rick and Morty and LeBron James in his Space Jam 2 outfit. LeBron being a character was especially cool to me because I just felt like it opened up so many possibilities and it just showed that this team wasn't afraid to get weird with their characters. At this point, I had started playing the game and I was all in. There were some key features missing such as ranked and arcade mode. And the game definitely did have some issues due to it being in the open beta state. And these things were, like I said, acceptable because the game was in an open beta and everything was promised to be coming soon. The game was incredibly fun and I was so excited to keep playing and see the future of multiverses. Season 1 was going to be the first big content drop and this was set to launch on August 9th, 2022, but it received a slight delay to August 15th. Now a 6 day delay is no big deal, right? But this was going to be a sign of future issues to come. Regardless, Season 1 was finally here, and in many ways, it did kind of feel like the official launch of the game, even though it was still an open beta. Season 1 brought a new battle pass and great new cosmetics, and these things were cool, but it did honestly feel a little lacking for a Season 1 update. There were no new maps, no new modes, and no new characters day 1 of Season 1. But they did promise new characters that would be th released throughout the duration of the season. And they also announced that arcade and ranked mode would come during this season. Now there wasn't a ton of content at this point, and so what kept me coming back was the battle pass. Multiverses had a pretty unique way of leveling the battle pass. There were daily and seasonal challenges that would give you XP towards your battle pass. The battle pass didn't just level up organically as you played the game, which is like the standard for most other games. This kind of bothered some people, but I found it pretty fun. The challenges gave me a reason to play other modes or play as other characters that I might not typically play. And the daily challenges gave me a reason to keep coming back. It actually kind of became a part of my like daily routine to play multiverses for like 30 minutes just to knock out those challenges. And the battle pass took a while, but I felt like it was fair. And again, it gave me a reason to keep coming back. The cosmetics in the game were great and I was having a lot of fun. For me, the problem started once the battle pass was completed. When that was done, there was pretty much nothing left to do. And with no ranked mode, I was left with nothing else to grind. And so I put the game down for a while and I think a lot of players had the same experience that I did because the player numbers began to slowly dwindle. A major update came on October 31st when they added the missing arcade mode that I had mentioned earlier. But the mode was pretty broken. The AI was extremely inconsistent. Some fights would have an AI that just like barely moved and then suddenly the AI would feel almost unbeatable in the next fight. 
It also had a lot of lag and desync issues, which was pretty strange considering this was supposed to be the single player mode. To sum it up, the mode was just a huge disappointment, and it was the first time for me that this development team really missed. Soon after that, Ranked Mode was finally released in a trial stage on November 8th, 2022, and this was a week before Season 2 was set to launch. So keep in mind, they promised Ranked Mode would come during Season 1, and it ended up coming out just one week before Season 2. So yes, they did hit their deadline, but they really cut it close. And sadly, despite the wait, the mode had a lot of issues. There were no placement games, meaning players were being put into extremely uneven matches, and that's not fun for anyone. It made progression extremely slow, and there were also some pretty big glitches with this mode, such as this one issue where one player would load in faster than the other, and when the devs tried to fix these issues with a patch, it ended up making things even worse and it got so bad they had to disable ranked. Another issue that came up with Season 2 was the Battle Pass. So for whatever reason, player first games made it significantly harder to level up the Battle Pass to completion. And many think that this was a ploy to force microtransactions because players could purchase the premium currency to level up the pass faster. But honestly, I think they did this simply because they knew the Battle Pass was the only real form of content the game had. And as I mentioned previously, I had stopped playing the game when I finished my Battle Pass, so I think they saw this as a way to keep people playing the game longer, but they way overdid it. I mean, as I mentioned before, you could only earn Battle Pass XP from the challenges, and with just three daily challenges per day, many players were starting to do the math and finding that it may be literally impossible to finish in time, even if they played every single day. The issues were continuing to stack up for multiverses, and I think the inexperience of the dev team was starting to show. The player count was plummeting, with Steam struggling to hit monthly peaks of even 1,000 total players. But not to fear, because Season 3 was on the way. Until it wasn't. In February 2023, we were in the midst of the largest content drought in the history of the game. There had been no significant updates for weeks. There had not been a new character since November 2022. And player first games were becoming a lot less communicative with the community. We were kind of left in the dark of what was happening and players were desperate for something new. And now they would have to wait even longer. On February 9th, 2023, it was announced that season three would be delayed. And it was a significant delay. Season 3 would now not start until March 31st. So that was a two, basically two full month wait. The tweet claimed this was done to allow people to have time to finish their battle passes due to the previously mentioned issue. But I think it's obvious they also just weren't ready for the new season. The delay of Season 3 was when I personally stopped playing multiverses. Almost every major update throughout the game's life cycle had been delayed at least once. And it was frankly frustrating as hell. I saw no reason to keep playing, at least until Season 3 actually came out. But that day never came. On March 27th, it was announced that Multiverse's open beta would come to an end and the game would be completely taken offline until 2024. This was a major shock. I can't really say I've ever heard of this happening before, and players were understandably outraged. They had spent money on this game, and now it was being taken away unexpectedly. And unexpectedly is the key word here. They had been very clear that this game was in open beta, but in many ways it didn't feel like it was. It didn't stop them from charging money for battle passes and skins, and while they were charging money for these things, there was certainly never any warning that the game could just be randomly shut down before its official release. Three months later, on June 25th, Multiverses was shut down with a promise of returning in 2024. And just like that, the best fighting game of 2022 was gone. It honestly saddens me to see the fate of this game. I truly loved playing it, and seeing the community turn so negative towards the end was just really depressing. And many players now fear that the game will not actually come back at all. And with a lot of the recent cost-cutting moves by Warner Brothers, I can understand how they come to this conclusion. For now though, it does appear they are committed to bringing this game back. We haven't heard much, but we've gotten little sprinkles of hints such as a tweet from Tony stating, it was a good day. When I look back at the history of multiverses, I feel like this was an example of suffering from success. Player First Games is an extremely small team, and I don't think they were prepared for the insane initial player numbers. And I don't think they could handle and manage the content output necessary to support a live service game. In terms of the content output they did have, I think the developers focused on the wrong thing. 
At the beginning, Multiverses had a pretty incredible amount of new characters being released. From just August 2022 to November 2022, they were able to add seven new characters. These characters included Rick and Morty, Gizmo and Stripe from Gremlins, as well as Black Adam. And this output of new characters was great, but it was kind of like the only new thing we were getting. There was barely any new maps, and the modes that were promised took forever to come out. And some of the characters had balancing issues due to the speed of the releases. Now I understand why they put such a focus on new characters. It's exciting to see a new character in the game, and it always got people talking. But I kind of think they overdid it, and should have focused more time on the other aspects of the game first. In the end, I think the overfocus on new characters was the fatal flaw of this game, which led to it eventually being shut down. I was a huge fan of multiverses. I mean, I still am. I believed in this game, and I truly hope it does make its expected return in 2024. But even with that said, unless player first games are able to expand their team and plan out their content drops better, I feel like all of these same issues will just pop back up again. In the end, I think shutting down the game for a period of time was sadly the right move. These developers were clearly overwhelmed, and this allowed for just a pure reset. And I do think the game coming back will give it a lot of attention and press, a lot more attention than just them simply saying one day, hey, it's officially out. I will certainly jump back into multiverses when slash if it gets re-released in 2024. But to be perfectly honest, I would be lying to you if I said I wasn't worried.